Welcome everyone to uh, Dev Fest Karachi. So just before I kick off my presentation, I am curious about what kind of people we have in here today. Um, so how many people here are actually students who are currently studying in university? Go ahead. All right, most of you guys are students. Excellent. This is going to be very useful for you guys. And how many guys of you are professionals, like working in the software industry? Yeah, nice, nice. About twenty percent. I'd like to see these numbers grow a bit more. So you can get your friends out of the offices. I mean, I mean, otherwise, if we keep sitting in our offices, we we can't learn that much. This is how we learn in communities. We come to these different presentations. We learn about new things, like the really good presentation we had just before. I mean, we just learned about after. So, so uh, my topic here today is about PWAs. Uh, show of hands, how many people have heard about PWAs? Wow, dude, come on. I mean, PWAs are all the buzz right now, right? Especially, I mean, Android developers should definitely be looking into this because this is scary stuff. Yeah? So, anybody here knows the full form of PWAs? Can I have a shout out on that? Progressive Web Apps. Progressive Web Apps, progressive web apps. yes. It sounds like a weird name. I mean, what could be a progressive web app? But we'll, we'll find out. All right. Oh. All right. So a bit about me. I mean, I've been introduced before. Uh, my name is Mashoud, and I am the uh, technical lead at Recursion. Uh, Recursion is a JavaScript consultancy, and we're essentially helping uh, startups in US and Europe build their products for them, uh, prototypes and other products. Um, I'm also a fairly active community member. Uh, all the other logos are different communities that are happening in Karachi. Judy um, Kalachi is obviously uh, one here. There's Angular Pakistan for those who are working with Angular. Uh, we have a pretty active community there. Uh, Devon Code is another amazing community that we're building up, and Free Code Camp is another related HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. People are learning this. Definitely check this out. It's really useful. So. Um, there we go. So, let's start with the big question of the day. Uh, what is a progressive web app? Um, so, the link below over here, it has a pretty big list of all the things that you need to do to make this thing, something called a PWA, but effectively it's just your web application, right? If you're using Twitter, or if you're using Facebook, or if you're using pictures on the web, that is essentially a web application. And if you follow certain rules, it becomes a progressive web app, right? So why, why do you need to call these, why do you need to create a special category of web apps called these progressive web apps? And it's because that over time, we've seen certain things, and one of the things that we are looking at is that we need certain things in web apps now, which everyone needs to follow. We want a standardized platform for all web apps around. And the second part that's really important for us is the first line over there. It needs to be usable very quickly across all networks and all devices. What does that mean? If I'm trying to open my app on my phone, it should work properly. I should not get a limited experience. If I'm trying to open my app on my TV, it should work properly. On my watch, it should work properly. So this is about creating an app and experience that is cross devices and cross networks. When I'm talking about networks, I'm talking about our internet connections, right? So we can have a Wi-Fi connection where I have a very fast connection which I can just download a lot of content, a lot of images. I can be on 3G or I can be on something much worse than 3G, like we have Edge over here so sometimes. Um, so effectively it's about getting that consistent experience across. Um, this is another useful option. We're going to talk about this a bit more. Uh, the app should be installable on your device, on, on your mobile phone specifically. And this is something now that PDAs now, PWAs now allow us to do. So the third point is about offline use. Now, we know a lot of the applications that we use today, we don't have internet with us all the time. So offline first is a very important part of PWAs. Fine, you might not get all the functionality, but your app should still remain accessible. If there are things that you've already opened up, you should be able to do that already. And you'll notice that this trend is coming across more and more of the apps. So if you try to Google Maps, for example, if you have already opened Google Maps before and you are traveling it while you're offline, you can still see the map, right? So that's offline first try. 
And finally, this is exciting because up till now, web, the main thing about web that has a missing is notifications. And with PWAs, we also get to say push notifications to users, and that's again across all devices. We're not just talking about mobile phones, we're also talking about laptops. Even on our desktop machines, we can get push notifications. In some ways, this is a bit scary. Uh, for all those who get like 100 push notifications every day from their 20 apps, uh, you can just only imagine what happens when 100 different websites are swinging up. But uh, the, the point is that we will have this functionality in all our devices very, very soon. Um, So, next one. Uh, so, you now you understand what a PWA is. Uh, but why should you build one, right? So, PWAs came across as a, as a mobile first strategy. If you wanted to make a mobile app, you could choose to instead make a PWA that will be automatically cross platform and it will have all functionality like push notifications and offline first strategy. So you don't need to make a mobile app. Um, but the point still remains, like, if we still have native apps, what advantage does a native app do over a progressive web app? And frankly, it's not that much anymore, right? Um, these are all the different features that PWA provides, and some of them are even making it even better than native apps, right? So the first part is, it's faster to download. Um, so if you, I mean, all of us download Android apps every day, and average Android app size is 10 to 20 MB. It's not something that we'd ever try doing on a 3G connection, right? We always download apps on Wi-Fi, -Wi, yeah. So effectively, uh, if I'm traveling and I'm on 3G and, and somebody shares this cool app with me, I can try it then, and there's a good possibility that when I reach home, or when I reach a place where I have Wi-Fi, I'm not, I'm not forget about that. So I have this lost opportunity right there. So with PWAs, the focus is all about speed. How do you get the app to go as fast as possible? And how, how do you do it? How can you take an app that, that's 20 MB big and make it as small as a few KB so that it can, it can download on 3G? And so if you dive into their documentation, you'll find out a lot of cool strategies the biggest one is uh, lazy loading. And effectively, you're only loading what's required of the app. So when I load the first page, I'm just loading the first page and the related content. I'm not downloading the whole app onto my phone. And this is effectively how websites work anyway. But we just take that thing a bit step further. So, so that's even more optimized. So, uh, in, regards, in regards to download, uh, one another interesting thing is that the so the spec that we're looking at it's, it says that the download time needs to be under five seconds for the first time to render. So your app needs to start working within five seconds of opening. And as we know today, most of the websites don't even do that. So we're actually looking at making very very optimized websites here. So I, I talked about it. we have push notifications and. Uh, so this was a, a big challenge up till now, up till recently, because push notifications were supported in uh, Android, but they were not supported in iOS or PWAs. But very recently, just a few weeks ago, uh, Apple announced that they will support uh, push notifications in iOS Safari, which means that you can actually start using PWAs across all platforms, at least the PWAs one. Um, share quickly and often. Um, for, again, those who are in the mobile world, they'll know that Whenever it comes to doing a new release in uh, your app version, you have to build the app. There's this whole process. You have to submit it to Google, and then they approve it, and then it goes in. Uh, it's, it's something that's not very easy to automate. But web application deployment is really, really fast. You just configure your build pipeline, boom, you're on. You, you can deploy multiple times a day without any problems, and you can, you can give your users the best experience all the time. And my favorite part is that there is no app store, right? Because at the end of the day, you're on the web. You're on Google, essentially. Anybody who wants to, who wants to use your app simply goes onto the website and starts using it. It's that simple. 
And obviously, since it's on the web, it's cross-platform, it's cross device I can use it on my TV, I can use it on my fridge, it doesn't really matter. If in the future there are other devices which have browsers embedded in them, they will support PWAs and you will be using this everywhere. And finally, my third part, uh, another, one, another one of my favorites is that it's installable. So effectively, I can install a PWA like a mobile app on my Android phone or my iOS device for that matter. And it, it creates this icon and everything on my home screen. And when I click it, it's, it loads it up in a full screen thing. So you don't see that here in the browser. Right? So that's very really useful because it actually gives me this full full screen app like experience. And I can build it just like my normal app. And they're, they're bringing a lot of other APIs in very soon. So we will have access to like the file storage. And then maybe in the future down. So we already have access to the camera. Uh, and we will be getting access to other cool APIs in the future as well. So there's the one big problem with PWAs, which is why they haven't been adopted yet. Um, and that is being service workers. So how many people here have heard of service workers? Right? Very few. Now this is a relatively new technology. And when I say new, this is actually two years old, but it's still being adopted by different browsers across the world. So even as of right now, IE and Safari have not fully really adopted it, but they have basic support now. So effectively, we are ready to build PWAs now. And as over the next few months, we will have complete support in Safari and Edge, and then all of our users can actually get the experience, the best experience possible on their on all the all the devices, be it your desktop or your mobile phone. So there is an interesting question. Uh, like, so there is this new technology, right? And but who is actually using it right now? I mean, is this just a new technology that is getting hyped up, or does there is there an actual demand for it? Are people actually starting to adopt it? And let's look at some of the industry leaders who started using this already. My personal favorite, and this is because I use this every day, is Twitter Lite. And Twitter Lite is a progressive web app. If you go on Twitter.com on your phone, especially you your Android phone, it gives you that pop up saying add it to your home screen. And that's it. You just click on yes and you can install an app. It's instant, right? And that is just, I mean, if I go and download the Twitter Android app, it at least takes a few minutes on Wi Fi. So that's the kind of experience that we're looking for. The awesome part about Twitter Lite is that. Not only does this give you the ability to make an install of app, but if you notice, the page opens up really fast. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're on Wi-Fi or 3G. It's, it's really because it's been optimized for that use. And for those of you who are trying to sell this to your clients or your bosses, uh, effectively, there, it, there has been some work done, and people are seeing better render times and overall increased engagement because of, of using PWAs. So here's another example. How many people have heard of Flipkart? Yeah, most of you, all right. Uh, so this is an e-commerce store, biggest e-commerce store in India, uh, doing no evaluation. And these guys were having some problem in traction. And one of the things they identified was that a lot of people didn't want to use uh, their mobile app because it was it was it was consuming a lot of data and they they couldn't run it properly on the 3G networks and stuff, right? So they created their uh, Flipkart Lite, and effectively that has uh, increased their engagement and increased their revenue because of this. And finally, uh, Tinder has also adopted PWAs. And effectively, uh, you can now use, for those who are using it, uh, on your mobile phone without actually even installing the app. So, that's, uh, so these guys have actually seen a uh, 70% increase in engagement from users and repeatable, repeated uh, usages from their mobile light app. So that's one thing that they find out. And there are obviously, the, the are just a few examples, and there are many other people who started using PWAs. And effectively, uh, that doesn't mean that they stop working on the mobile apps. But what the purpose of PWA is right now is that we're trying to give a better experience on the web for mobile. 
One final thing uh, I would like to add. So once you start building your PWAs, you would obviously want to test. I mean, if you have a very big checklist of things that need to be done in order to make your website a PWA, uh, you can always run some automated <coughs> tests. So this is a tool created by the Chrome Dev Team, and it's actually how many people have heard of Lighthouse? Right, a few of them. How many people actually use Lighthouse? All right, even fewer. But the point is that. The awesome thing is this thing is right in your Chrome browser now. For those of you using the latest version of Chrome, you will see there's a new tab in your developer tools called Audit. And if you click on Audit, it gives you all these options. So not only can you check progressive web apps, you can check uh, for performances and best practices and accessibility. And it will just run this audit on the website you open. So it, it can be for your own website or for any other website that you're checking out. And you can then see how they've implemented certain things. And this is just the tip of the iceberg, right? So this is just an introduction. There's a lot to it, uh, and so effectively all the new frameworks that are coming out, Angular, React, Vue.js, they all support PWAs out of the box. There's a lot of work happening. Uh, the Chrome Dev Summit that somebody mentioned, uh, there were I think about eight or nine different talks just on PWAs this time. Because this is one of the more hot topics around in the web space, at least. And this does give us this, this weird question. I mean, do we still need data apps if our mobile experience is so good on the web? And personally, I'm, I've, I've been using Twitter Lite over the last few months. And I feel that there's going to be a big segment of the market that will simply not need data apps in the future. <coughs> All right, that's it up for me. Um, and if you have any questions, you can catch me around after the talk, and you can email me over here. I'll also post the slides of the video. All right, thank you. He is the CTO at Bitfix Private Limited and he is also the CEO and founding member of Database Nicholas's IO. He can be going to talk about hands on approach to solve machine learning problems uh, using TensorFlow. Adidasa, can you please have your say? Clicker, move on, that's not. He's great, probably. Yeah, it just takes a few seconds. Let's wait. <laughs> it's always on the presentation day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, please, no. Okay.